bring a young goat or bring a lamb and we will find a way to remove your sin and put it into the lamb. So when the sin was brought, the Bible says the person offering the sin would put their hands on the head of the king or put their hand on the head of the lamb. When they did that, spiritually, there was a transfer of power. We see ourselves doing a lot of hands up till now. And you see a transfer of power when hands are laid. So when hands were laid, the sin in the person, and sin is a spirit, sin is spiritual, would move into the lamp. The righteousness of the lamp would move into the person. The person will now be without sin. The lamp will now be sin itself. And because the lamb or the king was now sin itself, sin will be killed. Because sin must die. Amen. So because sin must die, the animal would be killed. When the animal was killed, that was not the end of it. When you laid your hands on the animal, that was not the end of it. Once the animal was killed, what was really needed was the blood. The blood would be taken and presented on the altar. And by the presentation of the blood, by the sacrifice of the blood, now the person's sin was what? Removed. So we see in the New Testament, it says in Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no removal of sin. So the sin, sin's eraser is blood. Sin's eraser is blood. So long as there is sin, there must be blood. Because sin must die. Sin must be killed. Amen. So there was the sin offering. Now John sees Jesus and he wants to introduce Jesus to us. And he doesn't say, behold the Son of God. He doesn't say, behold the King of the universe. He doesn't say, behold the Creator. He doesn't even say, behold the Messiah. What does John say? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. That is saying that this is the Lamb God has chosen. If anyone can choose a perfect Lamb, a sinless Lamb, you and I, we can pick a Lamb and say it's perfect. And then another person will inspect it and say, no, there's a blemish. There's something wrong with it. It's not all that perfect. But this is the Lamb God has chosen. So John is looking at Jesus and saying, behold the one with no mistake. The one with no sin. The perfect one. Behold the Lamb God himself made a selection. The most perfect choice is walking before us. Behold the Lamb of God. And then he doesn't say, behold the Lamb of God who has come to heal us of our sicknesses. He says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. Now for the lamb to take away the sin, what does the lamb do? The lamb dies. For the lamb to take away the sin, the lamb dies because its blood must be offered. So as soon as Jesus is introduced to us, he's introduced to us as a person who is going to die. A death sentence is pronounced on Jesus. Day one at work. Hello, you are going to die. If it was you, you would quit the job. At this office, as soon as I walk in, they said I'm going to die. But as soon as Jesus assumed his office, everybody was told he is going to die. Actually, we have employed him to die. And yet, he did the job. What about you and I? What God is asking us to do, it doesn't require that we die. But are we doing it? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. And Jesus had come to take away the sin. Not the sin of the one who selected and presented. Not the sin of the one who selected the lamb. Because God doesn't have any sin. But he had come to take the sin of the world. So finally he was a lamb that could do what all other lambs could not do. Because every other lamb, when it was presented, it took away the sin of the one presented it. So if there are 20 of us, and we all sing, one man, one lamb, everybody bring your own. We can't all bring one lamb for all of us our sins. Are you with me? But Jesus is presented to us as a super lamb. He is not an ordinary lamb. 
he is able to absorb the sin of the whole world and transfer his righteousness, his perfection to the whole world. That is something no other lamb could do. And so Jesus is introduced to us as the person who spares the life of everyone in the world. And the person who perfects everyone in the world. So he's not only the one who is going to die, but he's the one who is going to let us live. Because if somebody doesn't die, then we will have to die for the sins we are committing. But now John says to us, look, this is Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. He has come to take away the sin of the world. But why did he come to take away the sin of the world? Why didn't he come to take away the sickness in the world? Why didn't John say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sickness of the world? Why didn't Jesus come to end injustice? The Jews were expecting a Messiah who would end injustice. They were expecting a Messiah that would overthrow the Romans. Their problem with Jesus was that he didn't want to stage a coup. They needed a coup. But Jesus didn't come to overthrow the Romans. Jesus came and said, my, my, the biggest problem in the world is not injustice. The biggest problem in the world is not your sickness. The biggest problem in the world is not the money you want you have on God or the marriage you want you don't have or the children you want you don't have. That is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem in the world is the sin problem. So that is the one I have come to address. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Because once sin is removed, everything else will auto correct. Removing sin is like hitting the reset button. Have you reset your phone before? Or your laptop when it's, mis it's misbehaving? You press reset, everything will operate the way it is supposed to operate. Amen. All the wrong uh, instructions you put into it will be removed and it will be corrected. Amen. So Jesus came to hit the reset button for the whole world. Tell your neighbor, reset. 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 The first time God requested a lamb was in Exodus 12. And I'm going to read a selection of verses from Exodus 12. And I'm asking you to patiently follow along. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Verse 6. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Verse 29. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captain who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he, all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks and your heads as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Amen. Amen. So this lamb that was killed in Egypt, it had a purpose. Its purpose, number one, was to save or protect life. 
If purpose number two was to prevent sorrow, if purpose number three was to bring freedom, number one, number one, save life, number two, prevent sorrow, number three, bring freedom, number four, protect life. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about protection. The Bible said that for you to be protected from the plague, the blood must be where? On your house. The blood must be on your house. It must be on the outside. It must be visible when I am passing by. Amen. The blood must be on our houses. Our house right now, as we are sitting here, our body is the form of a house. Because our body is the house of our spirit. You are a spirit and you are living in your body. Amen. So your body is a house. So the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb of God, the one who is seated on the throne, not the Lamb in your backyard, that blood must be on your body. But apart from the blood being on our houses, on our house, our body, it must also be on the physical house in which we live. Because in in Exodus, we see that they put their blood on the doorpost of their house. And when you go home, I want you to get into the habit of putting the blood on your house. Just open your mouth and say, I put the blood of Jesus on my house. Put the blood of Jesus on your house. Why? Because your house where you live, your home, is also the house of your body. So your body is the house of your spirit. And your home is the house of your body. Amen. And the blood must be on your houses, plural. So everywhere that you go and you sit, it is your house. So you can have more than one house, amen. But whichever house you have, the blood must be where? On your house. He said, when I see the blood, the plague will not come near you. So if you do not want to be destroyed, if you do not want to be destroyed, if you do not want the plague, then their blood must be on you. Some of the problems we are having is because we have forgotten to apply the blood. But he said, let the blood be on your houses. When the plagues went through Egypt, it destroyed people's bodies. Some of the plagues was the plague of boils and sore. Their bodies were covered with sickness. It destroyed their animals. It destroyed their businesses because when it hails and your crops are destroyed, that's your business. It destroyed their comfort. It destroyed their environment. And he's telling us that when we apply the blood, it will save us from the plagues, plural. Anything that destroys, he says the plague will not enter your house to destroy. Sickness destroys. Business failure destroys. The fact that you couldn't complete your education, it destroys. Amen. The plague will not enter to destroy. So we should do what? Put the blood. Because anything the blood is on, the plague cannot touch. Your protection as a believer, it has been what? Prepaid. Because Jesus has already shed his blood. So your protection has been prepaid. You don't need to find your own lamb. We have the lamb of God. All we have to do is what? Apply the blood. Tell your neighbor, apply the blood. Apply the blood. The scripture says that there was a great cry in Egypt. It says that night there was a great cry in Egypt. But in the house of the Israelites there was no cry. Which means that the blood prevented sorrow. The blood prevented grief. The blood prevented the pain of a sudden loss. So there should be no sudden loss. There should be no major disappointment. There should be no failure you cannot recover from. Why? Because of the blood. No Israelite was part of those weeping that night in Egypt. The Egyptians were weeping. Because the Bible says there was no Egyptian household in which somebody wasn't dead. But the Israelites were not weeping. Because of the blood, we have joy. Our joy has been paid for. So what is making you weep? What is making you cry? What is making you restless? 
all we have to do is to remind ourselves that the blood paid so that we won't cry. The blood paid so that we won't cry. So when you are in a situation that is causing you sorrow and grief, what do you have to do? You plead the blood. You tell the situation, my joy has been prepaid. My joy has been paid for. You can't take away my joy. You can't cause me to be filled with grief. There is no great cry coming out of your life because the Lamb of God has paid for your joy. Say, my joy is paid for. My joy is paid for. But also it says that the Lamb of God brought freedom. Pharaoh got up in the middle of the night and said, you people, go. Oh. In the middle of the night, he didn't wait till morning. The blood brought freedom. The blood brought freedom. Once there was, it took death in every home in Egypt. Every home. For the children of Israel to be released from slavery. Do you know what that means? That means that the Israelites would never have been free. Because under what other circumstances would they have been able to kill one person in every home in Egypt? Because if you attack part of them, the other parts will fight. But right now, what had happened was that they had attacked all of them. So there was nobody available to fight. It was a blow they could not recover from. But it was a kind of blow that only God could have dealt. The people could not have dealt that blow themselves. So the blood set them free. Amen. Amen. The blood brought an end to slavery. What slavery can you not come out of by yourself? In this world today, people are still enslaved physically. People are enslaved by bad habits. People are enslaved by wrong attitudes. People are enslaved by the environment in which they live. Because you live in a certain economy, no matter how hard you try, climbing out of poverty is a battle. Amen. Amen. Because you live in a certain environment, certain sicknesses will attack you whether you want them to attack you or not. Amen. Amen. Because you, live, you are exposed to a certain kind of people, you have a certain attitude. And that attitude might not be beneficial to you. I was speaking yesterday to Eva about the attitude of some new employees we've got. And it doesn't make sense to me that when you are employed and you are given benefits, you reject the benefits because you like the suffering. What mind is that? And you think you are being hard. You are not being hard. You have a problem. But that attitude is the attitude that is enslaving you. Amen. Amen. So whatever slavery there is, the blood brought freedom. And the blood of Jesus is the blood of the Lamb we have now. Amen. And that blood of the Lamb is bringing what? Freedom. The Amen. death of the Lamb freed slaves thousands of years ago. And whatever you are enslaved to, the death of the Lamb can set you free today. Amen. Tell your neighbor, my freedom has been prepaid. My freedom has been prepaid. But the most interesting thing I realized as I was reading this thing was that not only did the Lamb prevent the avenger from entering, not only did the Lamb cause them to be set free, not only did the Lamb prevent them from suffering and being in sorrow, the Lamb actually gave them life. The lamb that was killed, it gave them life. Why? Because as the angel of death was passing through the lamb, all it was looking for was where no one had died. And then it will kill somebody, isn't it? But because there was blood on their door, and you can't get blood from living things, you get blood when you kill it, right? So the blood means that in this house, Death has already taken place. Amen. So if death has already taken place, you can't kill two. Your job is to go and kill one one. One has died already. So every time the angel saw the blood, the reason they kept going was because death has already happened. It wasn't because they were skipping people. It was supposed to go and kill. And it was killing 
But it can't kill the dead. Amen. Amen. It can't kill you twice. So if there is already blood on you, then you're already dead. If blood has already been spilled in this house, then I can't enter it. Amen. So the lamb was the reason they didn't die. The reason no one died in Egypt was because the lamb had died for them. The lamb had given them life. The lamb's life had paid for their life. So it wasn't only that though the blood is protection, but the blood symbolized life. And if life has already been given, you can't take it again. Amen. So by the killing of the lamb, they were receiving life from the lamb. Amen. Amen. So long as they had a lamb's blood on their door, they could continue to live. So the lamb was actually giving them life. Eternal life requires a lamb whose sacrifice is good forever, whose blood can last forever. So long as the blood is there, our lives are spared. Amen. 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 Jesus came as a lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Because sin was the cause of death. The death that we want to end is caused by sin. Sin was the cause of sorrow. The pain in this world, the losses, the disappointments, the sickness, the grief, all the suffering, all the things that make you shed tears is sorrow. The root cause, it is sin. Sin was the cause of slavery. Because sin itself is an enslaver. Sin will capture you and refuse to let you go. And sin brought that mindset of keeping another person in captivity. Whether by economic means, whether by political means, whether by social standing, keeping somebody locked up so they cannot rise. So they cannot have honor. So they cannot show the glory of God whilst living their lives. That is slavery. And that idea, that ideology, that situation, it was created by sin. So more than anything, what we needed Jesus to be was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Because once there is no more death, because sin is paid for, you can have life. Amen. Amen. Once there is no more sorrow, because sin is paid for, we can have joy. Once our sin is paid for, then there can be no more slavery. Whatever is enslaving you, the highest price that can be put on you, wherever, whatever shrine, whatever person, the highest price that can be put on you is life, is blood. And by Jesus dying, he was given his life so that you cannot be enslaved anymore. Amen. He has paid the price for every slave in any form of slavery. By his death, he has paid the price for your freedom. So by his death, once sin is paid for, you are free. Amen. Mm-hmm. Jesus did better than the Lamb in Exodus. Because he didn't only set them free temporarily. He didn't only set us free from Egypt. Only to move somewhere else for Philistines to come and capture us. And Babylonians to come and capture us. And whoever else came to capture them and carry them into slavery. But Jesus set us free permanently. His blood, the Bible says in Hebrews that his blood is the eternal blood. And because his blood is eternal blood, it gives an eternal covering. It gives eternal life. Amen. Amen. And therefore, everything that the sin offering dealt with, and everything that the sin offering is dealing with, Jesus deals with it eternally. So when Jesus was sacrificed and his blood was spilled, it was an end to death forever, an end to grief forever, an end to sorrow forever, an end to slavery forever. Eternal solution. Amen. Amen. Jesus solved the problem forever. That is why he came as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin 
of the world, the death of the world, the sorrow of the world, the slavery of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Say, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Who takes away. Who takes away. The sin of the world. The sin of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to pray. We'll just pray shortly. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to pray. Jesus' blood sets us free forever. But the devil, he doesn't understand you. So when God is freeing you, Satan is chasing you. Amen. Amen. You want to pray and plead the blood of Jesus and declare that you are not going back into slavery. You know what enslaves you. You know what is worrying you. You know what is keeping you down. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Whatever happens, whatever situation, whatever environment is stopping you from rising up to be a reflection of God, a reflection of His glory, a reflection of His honor, a reflection of His power. You want to plead the blood of Jesus over that situation now. It has to end. Whatever is pursuing you, in the name of Jesus, we turn it back. We turn back the armies of Egypt. We destroy them now in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus, we will not be destroyed. We declare in the name of Jesus, there will be no destruction. We declare in the name of Jesus, help and peace. We declare in the name of Jesus, freedom from sickness, freedom from sickness, freedom from disease, freedom from sudden destruction, every form of slavery. Anything that is keeping you in slavery, anything that denies you an income, any situation denying you a good name, any situation denying you wealth, any situation denying you children, that is slavery. We come against it. We declare our freedom now. We declare our freedom now. We take it through the blood. We take it through the blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we declare that we have wealth. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we declare our name, our name, our names are preserved. We have names that will be honored by the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare that we have a legacy. Our legacy will endure in the name of Jesus. We will not work and somebody will take the glory. Somebody will take the honor. Somebody will put their name on it. As though we live and did nothing. We declare in the name of Jesus. Every form of slavery, every situation that has denied us honor, that has denied us recognition, that has denied us income, it ends now. It ends now. It ends now. It ends now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we rise up. In Jesus' name we rise up. We take the liberty that he has won for every slave. We take the liberty that he has gained for every slave. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exodus 14, 11 says, then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Amen. The children of Israel, they had not hope. They felt that when they've reached in life, they are going to die. So if it's all going to end now, then why let me die where they can even bury me? Rather than where I'll be just left in the desert like an animal, abandoned. I want us to pray and ask the Father that fill our hearts with hope. Fill our hearts with hope. We are not giving up on our future. It is not over. You are not going to die. You are not going to be destroyed. You are not going to be disgraced. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit, fill me with hope, Father. Fill me with hope. Fill me with hope. I am not giving up. Whatever situation you are in, I'm asking you this morning, do not give up. Ask for the strength that comes from hope. 
ask for the strength that comes from hope. There is hope for your future. There is hope for your future. There is hope for your future. God is not going to abandon you. Your end is going to be glorious. Your end is going to be honorable. You are not going to end like an animal in the wilderness. God is not your portion. In the name of Jesus, there is hope for your future. There are great things ahead of you. There are mighty things ahead of you. There are honorable things ahead of you. Your breakthrough is coming. Your joy is coming. The answer to your prayer, it is right here in the name of Jesus. It is right here in the name of Jesus. You are not losing out. You are not Missing out in the name of Jesus. Make a label in Gala Mashenda, Mora Tela Vasconde de Mariada, Imota Lavare, Kayeva Sate, Mashuki di Barua, Mera Kadabasenda, Mora Kadabasenda. We pray for courage to continue in the will of the Lord. We are not sending back. We are not going to be like the children of Israel, which is they had stayed in Egypt. No, we are not turning back. We will not go back. We will press on towards the goal. We will keep moving forward. In the name of Jesus, we will keep moving forward. In the name of Jesus, we will keep moving forward. In the name of Jesus. Courage to press on, hope to move on, courage to press on, hope to move on. We are not giving up on life. Do not give up, do not give up. No matter what has happened, it's exactly a year from now, we're hearing about COVID, but you are here, you are well. Do not give up. You may have been touched, but you've not been destroyed. Do not give up. Do not give us hope. God has filled our spirit. God has filled our souls with hope. God has filled our souls with courage. Let us arise as mighty men, as mighty women, as mighty people. Charge with your spirit. Charge with your spirit. Charge with your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Exodus 14, 12 states, Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. You want to pray and reject any suggestion of the enemy that your past life or living in sin is better than freedom in Christ. Amen. You want to pray and reject Every suggestion of the enemy, every whispering of the devil, you silence the enemy right now. You silence the voice of the enemy. Open your mouth and silence the voice of the enemy. Open your mouth and silence the voice of the enemy. Apply the blood of Jesus to your ears. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. Hear only the voice of God. You will hear only the voice of God. Your ears are open to the words of God. Your ears are open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Your ears are open to the will of God. In the name of Jesus, every whispering, every whispering, every whispering, it ends now. It ends now. It ends now. Be the blood of Jesus over your ears. Every discouraging voice, every voice that is mocking you, every voice that is tearing you, you will not hear that voice anymore. You silence the voice of the enemy. I silence the voice of the enemy. I silence the voice of the enemy. Enemy. Those whisperings in your ear, as you lie down in your pillow, they cease now, they cease now, they cease now. Hear the voice of God in the stillness of the night. Hear the voice of God at the break of dawn. Hear the voice of God. Hey, Hear the voice of victory. Hear the voice of hope. Hear the voice of honor. Hear the voice of glory. Every negative voice that has been speaking to you. Be silent now. Be silent now. Be silent now. Be silent now. In the name of Jesus, no more. No more will we speak. No more will we hear the voice of the adversary. From this time forward, we hear the voice of God. We hear the will of God. We hear the plan of God. We hear the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your will be done. Yes, Lord. Your purpose. Yes, Lord. 
your will. Yes, Lord, your purpose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.